It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New Orleans Saints. And it's coming up next. The first open back in 1975. There's a look inside the iconic Caesars Superdome in downtown New Orleans. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the New Orleans Saints. Brandon Gunn joined by Charles Davis here at the Superdome. But Charles, these Saints, after a good run from 2017 to 2020, have kind of been middle of the pack the last couple of years, seven and 10 a season ago. What's their recipe for turning things around? I think continuing the short passing game that they're known for, and see if some of their playmakers can make some short passes into longer plays. And then on defense, continuing to pressure quarterbacks in the pocket. They tend to get after them pretty hard. Well, meanwhile, for the Jaguars, the rebuild under Doug Peterson is right on track. And listen, nobody's going to get wildly excited about 9-8, and eight, which they were last year. I get that. But when that comes on the heels of 3-14 and 14 and 1-15, and 15, certainly a step in the right direction. And the biggest stride they can make this year is on defense, 28th against the pass last year, and just moving into the middle of the pack. That could buy them a couple more wins and put them in a great spot come playoff time. Now the kicker, Brandon McManus, about ready to get us started. And we are underway from the Superdome. From his end zone, here's Rashid Shaheed. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So here come the Saints to take over for the first time. And here's the new man under center after nine seasons as a Raider. Derek Carr is the guy. It's going to take some time to adjust to seeing Carr running out in a new uniform instead of black and silver. It's black and gold. 35,000 yards and over 200 touchdowns with the Raiders. The Saints more than willing to let him air it out all game long to a talented group of pass catchers in the Big Easy. Right to the air is Carr. And incomplete to open things up. The defenders certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield. There was a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage. And that throw had no shot. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? So two incompletions have led them to an early third and ten. Card out of throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Give him 18 there, and the Saints have a first down. Well, three and out to start the game would have been a real disappointment, so this is a nice job of finding something you think will work and executing it. And they're able to keep this opening drive going. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Again, it's Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it's second down. I like it. I like it. I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game. And you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. and really gets them amped up as they go forward. On second down, here's Carr. And Thomas has it. Seven yards there and a first down. Fake the jet sweep there and instead hand to Kamara. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Second 
From the 47 now, they work with a second and seven. Here's Carr. That is incomplete. That's already the third time they've looked his way on this opening drive. He's caught one of the three. That doesn't mean they won't continue to go in that direction. It feels like they think they've got something good going there, and they think those numbers are going to increase. Eighth play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. Now Carr. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time to have a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time. And they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. Now Lawrence down around his goal line. And the catch made by his tight end, Luke Farrell. And they work this out past the 25. Hang on now. We're going to pause here. We've got an injured player. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury. And we'll be back in a moment. Here's a Louisiana native from the town of Jennings. It's Travis Etienne. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. On second down, here's Lawrence. He'll get this one complete to Zane Jones. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play you can just finish them off right now? Because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. Here's a second and eight. Another toe for ETN. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. So in Saints territory now. Here's first and 10 right at the 40. Here's Lawrence to throw. Man open, that's Calvin Ridley. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A well-executed 22-yard gain. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. On first down, Lawrence. Open man right side is Ingram. 
Just a gain of a couple there, and it's second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield, or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right? That run after catch. On second down, a run with ETN. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. That run wasn't a big breaker, but I don't think the guys on offense mind very much. They've got a nice drive going, and they might just be luring the defense in a little bit. They could probably come back with a play action, maybe go over the top. But right now, on this drive, their playbook is open. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Jags are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need to tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Here we go now on first and goal. Bigsby will get it into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. So that a great sequence for these guys to begin the ball game. They force the punt on one end, then come right down the field and score on the other. And that's a great example of leaning on each other and building a little momentum that way. How about the defense forcing the punt, turns it over to the offense with confidence, and they take it downfield and score. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And this is up and good. The score now 7-0 Jaguars. A 10-play drive that time. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. To the touchdown here's McManus now to kick it away from a couple yards deep he'll bring it out of the end zone and he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line New Orleans Saints they get ready to set up shop for their second drive defense got the better of them last series forcing a punt see if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive first and ten They start the drive on the ground. Kamara, and he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Second down, and it's Kamara again. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Throwing now is Carr. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Throwing on first down is Carr. Again, it's Johnson. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? 
And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. From the 48-yard line, here's second and three. Carr going to throw. Here's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him the first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. They're down to the 41. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there, but how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. This is second and eight. To throw his car. Throw is going to be incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early, but it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Carr. And that is incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Well, on that punt, we've got a man shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Now a second and ten. Toss left side for ETN. And he'll be taken down, but they've got this one up to the 35-yard line. 45 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. Well, they're making a real first-quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old-school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, set, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. On first down, right back to ETN. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. From the 41, here's second down and five. From the shotgun, Lawrence. Jones has it. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 44-yard line. And that one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice game for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. Now Lawrence on first down. He'll drop that underneath to ETN. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Well, he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL. Being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. And he will find Ridley on the left 
left side. A busy first quarter. His third catch of the afternoon is a first down. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and 10. Lawrence. A slant to Jones. Heck of a broken tackle and able to work this down near the 23. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three. At the 23 yard line. From the 23, this is second and three. Play action. It's Lawrence. A short throw there to Strange. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 13-yard line. Give them 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Credit Brian Brzee in there to greet him and drop him for a loss. I think we got to give it up for him right there. That's a heck of an athletic move for a big man right in the middle of the line. How about the play he makes there? Nowhere to run, and he finishes that one off for a loss. On second down, Lawrence. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. Third and seven now. Looking to throw Lawrence. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job here of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. The kick by McManus is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The New Orleans offense set to take over. Nothing for him yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. On play action, it's Carr. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll drop to throw. They'll get this out to Kamara. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. And this offense on third down today, they've hit two for four thus far. 
They're up against a third and one situation. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They're able to convert with a gain of four. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Tyson Campbell up to make the stop. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. On second down, here's Carr. There's Chris Olave. Short completion, just four yards, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. Now Carr, he's got his target, that's complete. And he is gonna have a Saints first down as they're able to move the sticks with a gain of four on third and inches. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation, it paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot, so you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Meanwhile, Carr's throw complete there to Thomas. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Another connection between the two. This one good for 12 and a first down. And this offense has been a little slow to get going, but some signs of life here in this second quarter. They're moving it pretty good. And that helps the cause as well. Good yardage and another first down. From the gun, it's a run for Kamara. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. But if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it, but don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. From the 31, here's a second and five. To throw its car. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Kamara up the middle. And here he'll get it down to the seven. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Second and six with the ball on the seven. Jet sweep. Here's Alave. Olave taking it in from seven yards away. And the Saints have got it back to a little score. Well, we've talked about it before. You know, this jet sweep, something a lot of teams like to run nowadays, and this one winds up in the end zone. And it is all about creating different ways to get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. And wasn't it interesting that prior to this game, the head coach told us, I saw this sitting in my chair watching a Tuesday night college game and decided to implement it myself. Point after, right down the middle. And that'll cut it to three at Kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Oh. 
And his guys will get the football right at the 20 yard line. Jacksonville offense gets the ball back. Travis Etienne and company head back out there. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Run coverage, excellent there from the defensive end position. How many times do we sit with coaches and they talk about a base defensive end, a guy who can anchor and play with leverage? We just saw a great example of it. And how about the bonus, tackling the runner for a loss? Lawrence's throw here taken in by Ingram. Call it a gain of six on the play, third and seven now. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Decent gain on the scramble at six, but now it's four. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own, but as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you, and if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. The Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. That's taken on the 25. 43 yards on the punt, seven yard return, and the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. Well, things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here, and I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? On first and ten, here's Carr. Over the middle, into the hands of Michael Thomas. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. From the 41, this is second and a yard. Now Carr. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. They'll pound it up the middle with Kamara. First down as he's going to be taken down, but a very nice pick up there just in front of the two minute warning. On first down, Carr. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. Back to throw. That'll be taken in by Shahid. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. A 10th carry for Kamara, and he is gonna lose yardage here. The Jaguar is gonna go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next.
Out now is the field goal unit for New Orleans. This will be from 49 yards out. And his kick is indeed good, and that will knot us up at 10. Well, maybe a little bit of an anxious moment there as that ball got closer and closer, but it does curl in. Yeah, actually did a little bit of a slow dance there with the left upright, didn't it? But had just enough space, as you said, for it to curl in. Piece as the kicks away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. You got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. Quick slant caught by Kirk. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. From the 31, here comes second in a yard. Now Lawrence. And one more time, here's Kirk. And Kirk is going to have the Jaguars first down as he'll be brought down at the 38-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Lawrence. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field. It took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. Second and 10. Now Lawrence to throw. Open man right side is Ingram. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That's completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands, speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Again, it's Lawrence. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Now Lawrence on first down. Taken down here by the Saints. Brian Bozee fought in and got him down. So we have reached halftime here in a good one. 10-10 is our score. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. Holding, They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard. But it's tough to simulate game speed in practice. And that often runs you into a penalty. On first down, Lawrence. His throw incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion force there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. Uh, here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. They'll run with ETN. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. Nothing fancy really on either side. They were just trying to punch it between the tackles, but could not get it done. That felt very old schoolish, didn't it? Because we always talk about how we spread it out on offense nowadays and try and create some running lanes. That one was really tight. Go get it. A big pile of bodies didn't quite get there. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 37. He'll start with a give to Kamara and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. With well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to the feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Johnson. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gets him a first down. Here's Carr. Throwing out right here, caught by Alave. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that will bring up second down. sloppy tackling and how about right there he ran right through that weak tackle attempt so after the run by Kamara now another first and ten they fake the handoff now Carr and that one incomplete but now a penalty flag coming in late that might be P.I. So pass interference, the call there, always, obviously, Charles, such a subjective call. You agree with the penalty? Well, from where we're standing right now, 
I think the officials are tightening things up here in the second half. Maybe a defender gets away with that in the first, but this time the flag comes out, and I think it's a good call. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Trayvon Walker from his outside linebacker spot gets him down there for a loss of four. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. They'll get a couple yards back, but not more than that. They'll be left with 12 yards to go on third down. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Throwing his car on third down. A throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. Out now is the field goal unit for New Orleans. This a 31-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And they will take the lead at 13-10. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 21. They'll look to ETN to start things out. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. From the 25, here's second and six. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Over the middle, that's caught by Ridley. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. And it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected, but this is a good pickup here for the first down. On first and 10, it's Lawrence. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the past, but in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right, it might go to them in this game. I like that, MVU. Well done. Now this is going to be a quarterback draw. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half, and that trend is continuing here. And yeah, they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. 
Lawrence will throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 29-yard line. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. Looking for the out route here, and it's completed to Kirk. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it'll be second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the going to go down here as sack. They push him back to the 34. Brian Brzee picks up his second sack of the afternoon. They've got up over 30 yards of turf so far, but the sack knocks him backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. shot in there. It's out of bounds incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed always different no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. And that is no good. I oh, hit it well from distance, but he couldn't work it back in. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. Now listen, now no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, and it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their background. They were all county, all state, and other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. And because they couldn't hit the long field goal, they are set up nicely offensively at the 41, first and 10. And they'll fake the jet sweep there and instead hand to Camara. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. On running plays, linemen, of course, have their assignments. That's expected. But it's not often you're expecting to see a cornerback blitzing in run support and tackling the runner for a loss. Kamara gets it again on second down. Shifts past him at the 45. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The 71 yards rushing now for Kamara, and it's a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second down at a yard. Now they'll throw with Carr. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. Car to throw on third and one. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he'll lose yardage here back at the 41. This will wind up a loss on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. Here comes the Saints punter now, as he's on here to punt it away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone, 
A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Kind of picked themselves up from that one. The end result, 21 yards. ETN up the middle. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second down and six. They'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. The Jaguars on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and six. Here's Lawrence. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. This is taken at about the 14. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 23. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He'll find Shahid out to the right. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. On first down, Carr, Alave over the middle. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second down and two. On play action, it's Carr. He completes it to Alave. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Big yardage after the catch. That one winds up going for 36. Well, partner, that's how you make a long drive. Suddenly, not so long anymore. One big play, and they're already in field goal range with designs on getting more than that. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Now Carr. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Call it a gain of three on the play, and that'll make it second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet inbounds, toe tapping, and of course, 
foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. That's Foley Fadukasi who got in there and finished off the play. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's really a difficult task. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. T and the Saints kick team booms it away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 21. Now ETN to start the drive. Fights him off. And able to use a stiff arm for a little bit of leverage before he's taken down. A pretty good gain. 62 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Here's second and three. Now Lawrence to throw. And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zay Jones that time. And it's third and short. search of a short gain on third down and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards and here we are in the fourth quarter partner and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown and you and i both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there not just for himself but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too so signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half here's first and ten the play fake here's Lawrence and just not enough on the throw there down around his feet and incomplete okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him mechanics might have been off maybe some fatigue that one came up short yeah fourth quarter maybe you do start to watch as the arm there the legs still there this has been a tough game here's second and ten on the draw here's Lawrence going to take this one down inside the 45. He's able to call his own number for eight that time, but it leaves him with a third down. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field. They're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. 
A three-yard gain and enough for the first down. Brandon, this can be so demoralizing for a defense. They've had two opportunities to get off the field. They haven't gotten it done. So now your coordinator, he's going to call every blitz that he has, any type of exotic, something that they haven't seen before. And he's also telling the defensive lineman, don't worry about holding people up. Just get in gaps and try to make a big play. And not only not getting off the field on two opportunities, clock continuing to run. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Now Lawrence. Trying for Kirk, and he's got him on the crossing route. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 24-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. On first down, Lawrence. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well and that one's incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to the ground with ETN. And good running. Going to get this down close to a first at the Saints 16. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. This drive is turning into an extended one. And, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Third and two, now Lawrence. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And the Jaguars are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. They come up on a first and goal and most likely four down territory as they need a touchdown and the PAT for the lead. Caught on the right side by Jones. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Now Lawrence, and that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Evan Ingram from four yards out. And the Jaguars are an extra point away from going back on top here in the fourth. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. McManus now for the extra point. It's up and good, and they take the lead by a point, 17-16. So that drive spans 13 plays, and Evan Ingram able to finish it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. The Saints coming out now to take the field. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 21. They begin on the ground with Kamara. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. 
89 yards rushing for him now to this point. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. And he'll get it up to the 33 yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Shotgun now for Carr. Throwing out right here, caught by Alave. Only able to gain a couple there, and that'll bring up second down. Now Carr. That'll be taken in by Shahid. Stop shy of the 45. Showed off a nice little move on the play, though. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Again, this is Kamara. And this will wind up a Saints first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. Fourth quarter, two minutes on the clock in a tight one-point game. So it's Saints football as we get your reset. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Oh, what a time for a lapse defensively. That turns this game right on its ear. And now, forget about going fast. They might want to take the air out a little bit and force the defense to use some timeouts. Now first and goal. Car to the end zone, but it's incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Car to throw. It's caught. The Jaguar is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play. Third and goal. Camara. And I don't think Kamara got there. Looks like they stopped him short. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This for the lead in the final stages. And this one is right through. And with a little over a minute to play, they have taken the lead. Big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth, but there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they scored too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this taken in at the goal line. 
And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. So here now, Lawrence and the Jaguars down by two, a minute eight to go. Now their lead is evaporated, but they still have a shot on first down. Here's Lawrence. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. It may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. Second down, eight yards to go. Throwing now, Lawrence. Oh, and that nearly ended it. That should have been intercepted, but he cannot corral it, and that is a lifeline there with third down coming up. Desperation throw deep downfield. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. I don't know if you need the big shot right there or not because you've still got time to work some of the shorter stuff and try to get into field goal range. They did go for the big one there. It would have been nice, but it winds up incomplete. Well, you need your best play here, no doubt. Fourth down and eight. Here we go, gotta have it. Lawrence, and it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And boy, possession here turns over with the football already being in the red zone. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. The Saints in victory formation now as they'll take the knee. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in quarter number four. Take a knee. separation from each other and they were both hoping that the other side would make the big mistake first but today neither side made that mistake and what we got a very entertaining game throughout so that'll do it for us for charles davis and all our crew i'm brandon gordon you've been watching the nfl on ea sports the saints are winners here as we say so long from new orleans